conference is on the 26th of Jan, but I don't think it's a Saturday. I think it's a Wednesday or something. So just the day, there's a slight error on the video. Uh, but it's on the 26th of Jan, that's the date. Uh, and it's from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. So man, please, everyone 13 years and older are welcome. If you want to bring your younger sons along, they're a little less than 13, that's also fine. Just bring them along. Uh, so we'd like to see all the men in the church there uh, for the men's conference. All right, we want to take a moment to welcome those who are with us for the very first time. Anybody here, this is your first Sunday morning at All People's Church. We just want to take a moment to welcome you. Could you please stand if we could welcome you this morning. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. If you can just remain standing for a few moments, our greeters will come and uh, give you a welcome packet. And as soon as you receive that welcome packet, you can be seated. Uh, please relax and enjoy the service. Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, just to worship the Lord with us and spend time together with us. Uh, at the end of the service, if you could make your way to the hallway towards my left, uh, our group of uh, our business welcome team, a group of people in the church will be there to meet with you, uh, get to know you, spend some time with you, answer any questions that you might have, uh, and also pray with you if there's any need. Um, if you're already part of a church where God's word is being taught, then we just encourage you to remain faithful there. Uh, but if you're looking for a church that you, want, that you would like to be a part of, grow together with, you're most welcome to come back, worship with us here at All People's Church, and see uh, how God wants you to be planted here, how God wants you to serve you. Uh, we're just wel welcome to have, have you with us. Um, our our uh, news uh, bulletin for the first three months, January, February, March of 2012 is available. Uh, so if I says if you could just go out and give it, give one uh, to every family. I don't think you need more than one for, per family. Uh, I says if you just go out and uh, distribute this, I'd encourage you to just take it with you. Um, all the main events for these three months are in the bulletin, uh, so you'll stay informed and uh, be involved. So please go ahead and give this out. While they're doing that, I just want to remind you about the word of the Lord that we uh, brought to us as a church. On New Year's Eve service. How many of you were here on New Year's Eve service? Can I see your hands? Oh, good, good number of you. Uh, New Year's Eve service, we bring the word of the Lord, what God is speaking to us as a body, as a church for each year. And uh, the word of the Lord for 2012 was based on Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. And it's in your connect that's being given out. Uh, you could also get the complete message from our church website uh, if you'd like to do that. Uh, Isaiah chapter 60 verse, verses 1 and 2 where God says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though darkness cover the earth and deep darkness the people yet the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. So we said that the word of the Lord for us is simply this his glory will make the difference. Amen. So let's say it together, His glory will make the difference. Therefore, expect things to be different for you because of God's glory upon you. Now verse 2, God says, you know, though darkness cover the earth and deep darkness the people, it's going to be dark all around, but it's going to be different for you because His glory is upon you. You don't have to have a love of what happens around you to determine what happens to you. What happens to you is determined by God's glory upon you. Amen? Not by what's around you. And uh, we shared these few things. We said when it's dark all around, you will have light. When tragedy strikes all around, you will see triumph. When despair grips those all around, you will have hope. When hearts all around faint in weakness, you will have strength. God's glory on his people will be the key differentiator between his people and the people in the world. We do not need to worry about what we see happen around us because even if thousands fall all around us, we will stand. Amen? But in order for us to walk in the glory of God, we reminded ourselves that we must be a people of purity because God dwells among a people who are holy. We must walk in faith, the kind of faith that says, I know He will. 
We must walk in authority, the dominion that God has vested in us. We must walk in the anointing of God, the, the presence and the working of the Holy Spirit. And we must walk in unity because it's among a people of unity that are in of one accord, in, that are united, that God releases His glory. Amen? So let's press into this in 2012. All right, why don't we stand up to our feet, make a declaration, and we'll get into God's Word this morning. So if you brought your Bible, please, let's all rise to our feet, hold your Bible high up in the air, and say this out loud to me. This is God's Word. This is, God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I'm blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word. I believe His word. And I live by His word. Christ is my master. And to Him, I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Just a little word of announcement before we get into God's word. You know, uh, towards the end of December, there were several attacks on Christians and uh, churches in the state of Karnataka. And I've sent an email out. Some of you may have received the email. Uh, especially on December 25th, there was an attack on, um, on um, a pastor and his members of his church. They were just getting together to have Christmas dinner together. And they were attacked uh, in Surat Kal. And um, uh, there was another church on the 28th of December. Uh, people came in, and again, just uh, in, in Karnataka itself came in. They damaged the church and everything else. Uh, and so uh, FCCO is a body that's formed here in the city of Bangalore. Uh, but some of the main churches here in, in Bangalore, we, we formed that about four years ago. All People's Church is a part of that. And one of our objectives at, at FCCO, which is the Federation of Christian Churches and Organizations. Yeah, Christian Church and Organizations. Uh, is for us to be a voice for the persecuted right here in our state. And uh, we've existed for four years, we've done four or five years now, and we've done a few things here and there, but you know, we met on the 29th, I think, on the 29th of December after these two attacks happened, and there were some others uh, around the same time. We met together, we said, you know, we must do something. You know, we, we helped the church, we helped the pastor a little bit, but we need to be a voice, we need to lift up our voice to the government, we need to address, uh, uh, you know, go through the judicial system, uh, to stand for our rights as citizens, which one of the basic rights, one of our fundamental rights, is the freedom to practice our own religion, a religion of choice, and even to promote it. So we must stand up for this. The only, and then we said, you know, the only big thing that's holding us back is a lack of money. Because if you want to get in, uh, file a petition, you have to employ an advocate. And we said, you know, we'll use a non-Christian advocate rather than just using a Christian advocate. Because, uh, you know, that it's not just, our, you know, we're not just standing up for our own, but it's for the entire minority uh, group in the state that, that, that's lifting up their voice. And so all of that is going to cost a lot of money. And so we said, you know, how much money do we need even to file a petition? Uh, a public interest litigation in the court. We need a minimum of 10 lakhs even to begin to think of doing it. Uh, uh, and we've got all the documented cases, all the papers, we've got everything, but to take it to court and address it uh, through the legal system to bring protection to those who are being persecuted, we need at least 10 lakhs to get started. All right? So we said that, you know, okay, all of our churches will pull some money in, and if, and if we can raise 10 lakhs by the 17th of Jan, then we will proceed. If we can't, then I said we might as well close FCC or down and each one fight their own battles. You know, there's no point having an organization if you're not going to do something. So hopefully, we'll all rise up to the challenge, and uh, I don't know if you like this, but I promised to give 5 lakhs. From all people's chats, okay? I said, okay, you know, I don't care what other churches are going to do. We are going to be a voice. We are going to mean business about this. As uh, APC will give five lakhs towards this. And let the other churches, you know, do what they want to do. But uh, the thing is, if we don't get 10 lakhs by the 17th of Jan, uh, 
we can't, I said, there's no point in us existing. We have to do something, and then we might as well close and go. Uh, so, those who would like to give towards FCCO, uh, you can do that. You can make a check payable to FCCO, or you could put some money in a cover and just write on the envelope FCCO, and just give it at the end of the service, and there'll be a group of people who are counting the offering, and just come and give it to them. Is it okay? No compulsion, just do what you feel God wants you to do. All right, look at your neighbor and tell him or her, step up. Step up. Then the other side say, step up. step up. This morning, I just want to bring a little inspirational, motivational, stir your nest, put fire under your, uh, fire under your <laughs> kind of message. Just to motivate us to move to new levels in all areas of life in 2012. Amen? To step up in all areas of life. There's no point in just remaining where we are. 2011 has come and gone and we are now at the beginning of a new year and we have to make a determined effort that by the end of this year we will move to new levels. Go a little higher. Go a little further. Go a little deeper. Grow a little stronger in all areas of life. Progress, growth, increase, being fruitful. All these are supposed to be normal. They are not ungodly. In fact, they are, a, they are godly attitudes. When God created Adam and Eve, put them in the garden, he didn't say, okay, two of you just enjoy the whole earth. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Go, fill, increase. So the whole concept of growth, increase, uh, progress, advancement is godly when it's motivated right. Sometimes we think, you know, I shouldn't ask God for more. Uh, uh, God will get angry. It's, it's an ungodly thing to desire increase, to be more fruitful, uh, to see growth. We, we have the wrong religious idea that those things are wrong. But that's not true. God wants us to grow. Look at some scriptures. There are many scriptures we're going to go through. Some we will read together and some I'll just quote for us. If you'll turn with me in your Bible to Psalm 84. Psalm 84. We'll read, it. We'll read verses 5 through 7. Psalm 84. It talks about a man whose strength is in the Lord. And it says... Blessed, Psalm 84, verses 5 through 7, it says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Meaning, his heart is set on a journey of devotion with God. He wants to walk with God. Blessed is a man whose strength is in you. His dependence is on you. He's leaning on God. And his heart is set on a walk of devotion with God. What does it say about this man? Verse, uh, verse 5 says, verse 6, As they pass through the valley of Baca, if you have some side notes in your Bible, you will see it says, as they pass through the valley of weeping. Baca means weeping. As they pass through the valley of weeping, what will happen? They make it a spring the rain also covers it with pools and you see a side note the word pool simply means blessings so it says a man whose strength is in God whose heart is set on a walk and a journey with God when he goes through the valley of tears the valley of weeping what does he do he doesn't get into a pity party no in the valley of weeping he makes it He didn't say God makes it. It says he makes it a pool of springs and, the, and it rains down blessings in that valley. Can you imagine if you are a person whose strength is in the Lord and you've set your heart on a walk and a walk with God. It says that when you get into a valley of weeping, you've got the capacity to make it a place of blessing. Amen. That's the Bible. And then it says in verse 7, they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God and Son. They go from strength to strength. 
See, that's God's desire for each one of us. You grow. You go from strength to strength. No, no, you know, 2011 was a great year. 2012, ah, I'll just barely make it by. No. You grow from strength to strength. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Talking about our journey of faith. Romans 1 and verse 17. Romans 1 verse 17 says for in it that is in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith so it's talking about a, a life of faith a walk of faith and it says that we go from faith to faith so our walk of devotion goes from strength to strength a walk of faith goes from faith to faith and our journey of transformation 2nd Corinthians 3 18 a very well-known verse 2nd Corinthians 3 18 what about a journey of transformation 2nd Corinthians 3 18 says but we all with an unveiled face behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord we are changed or transformed into that same image from glory to glory even by the Spirit of the Lord Amen. So our journey of transformation, of being changed into becoming more and more like Jesus, it says we go from glory to glory, from one level of glory to a higher level of glory. That's our journey of transformation. So as believers, this is our mindset. This is the way we should be approaching life. This is the way we should be going about our journey of faith that we must grow from strength to strength from faith to faith from glory to glory amen, amen. and that's a godly thing to do spiritually for example these are scriptures that you might be familiar with so i just quote them spiritually we are to progress second peter 3 and verse 18 says grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grow. Keep increasing in the knowledge of Jesus. Grow in grace. Meaning in virtue. In character. In Christ likeness. Grow in this. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 tells us. Let us leave aside. Leaving aside the first principles. Let us move ahead to maturity. In other words he's saying. Get out of kindergarten, get into middle school or high school. Get out of high school, get into college. Get out of college, get into the workplace. You know, leaving behind the first principle. You've got the basics there. Don't stay there. I mean, it's good to remind ourselves of the basics from time to time. But he's saying it's high time you get past the very basics and begin to move into maturity. Amen? So God wants to see this happen for all of us. In our lives and in every area of life if you go with me to Psalm 115 I like us to look at this together Psalm 115 verses 13 to 15 Psalm 115 the psalmist is praying a prayer for God's people Psalm 115 verses 13 to 15 it says he will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. He's talking about the blessings of God upon those who fear Him. Verse 14. May the Lord give you increase more and more. You and your children, may you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. So the psalmist is praying for God's people. He says, may the Lord increase you more and more. You and your children. May the blessing of the Lord bring increase in your life. Amen. So 2012, we must desire to see progress, advancement, increase, growth in all areas of life. Amen. Amen. So tell a neighbor, step up. We got to step up in 2012. And you know, our goal, our, our, our objective is, you know, not just to 
reach goals or have accomplishments. But I think the greater thing is that in the process of pursuing goals, in the process of reaching for our dreams, we are changed. That is the real thing. Because goals, you can get to goals in many ways. You can achieve things in many ways. Example, if you say, you know, I want to earn more money in 2012, you can get there many ways. Rob a bank, win the lottery. But getting there by those ways doesn't change who you are. It has not added value. But if you say, you know, in order to reach that, I'm going to learn some new skills. I'm going to increase what I, the value I bring to my organization. And because of that, they, I'm going to see this. What's happened? You have changed. So the value is not just in the goal. The value is in the process. Because in the process, you become a better person who can glorify God and carry the name of God with honor and dignity in your life. Amen? So it's not about the goals and the achievements because there are so many ways to get there and people can get those things many different ways. But it's about the process and what it does to you. Amen? So, as we talk about stepping up in 2012, let's address, you know, why is it that some of us stagnate? You look back, 2009, I was a certain level in my spiritual life, I was a certain level in my professional life, I was a certain level in, my, in the ministry, uh, 2009. 2009 came and went, 2010 came and went, 2011, at the end of it, well, I'm still there spiritually. I'm still same place where I was professionally, I'm still the same place where I was... Um, Relationally, same place, you know, in different areas. Yeah, I'm still there. Why did I stagnate? How come I haven't gone from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory? Uh, why haven't I seen the Lord increasing me more and more in all these areas of my life? Why do some of us end up stagnating? Here are some reasons, and I'm not saying these are the only reasons, but just something for us to ponder about this morning. One is because we keep going back to old ways. We keep going back to the old ways of doing things. You know, the way we've always done things is what has brought us to where we are. And if you want to step up to new levels, it's very likely we need to make some changes in the way we are doing things. If you want to step up. And, but many of us are very comfortable in the way we are doing things, so we just keep going back to the same old ways. Example, let's say in 2012, you want to become a little bit more stronger in your spiritual life. So, well, and, and you're just used to spending 15 minutes with God every morning, and that's good. But if that's all you're doing, and that's all you do through 2012, it's very likely you'll remain where you are. Are you with me? Because that's what you did to get to where you are. And if you just keep doing the same thing, you'll remain where you are. But if you want to go up to another level spiritually in your intimacy with God, in your knowledge of the Lord, you've got to do, do, do something different. Maybe spend more time, increase it to 30 minutes. Spend, be a little more serious in your prayer. Take a day out to pray. Maybe study a book in the Bible. Maybe... Read some good Christian books. Maybe after you slept through the Sunday morning sermon, you hear it again on Tuesday. <laughs> you need to do something different. Because the way we were doing things is the way what has brought us to where we are. And if you're going to step up, maybe you need to change some things. Amen? And uh, Paul put it like this in Philippians chapter 3, you may want to look at it. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, again, they are very familiar verses. Paul says, I do not count myself as to have apprehended or to have arrived. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. I do not count myself. I do not consider that I have arrived. I have reached my destination. No. He says, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, I press 
toward the goal. Meaning, I'm making, an I'm making a conscious effort to leave what, has, what is behind and I'm making a conscious effort to press toward this upward call. This call of God that's calling me to glory, to more glory to greater levels of glory that is calling me to greater levels of faith that is calling me to greater levels of, of strength I press toward the goal Amen and he's saying see you know, I don't think I've arrived so the past I'm leaving behind me the past successes 2011 must have been a great year for you you did wonderful but you got to leave that behind and keep pressing if you want to go to the next level of glory Amen so look at the way you're doing things in your life and say, you know, what changes can I make to step up in my life this year? I need to let some things go. The way I'm doing things, I've got to let it go so that I can press toward the, the goal, the upward call of God. Another reason people don't progress is because sometimes we don't have a vision of the future. We don't have a big picture. We are so engrossed in the here, now, today. And we have no picture of where we should be five years from now, ten years from now, maybe twenty years from now. And so all we are consumed with is here, now, the immediate, nothing, and therefore nothing motivates us to say, there's higher levels for me to go into. There's greater ground, there's greater territory that I must conquer. And so we remain where we are because we're always consumed with the here and the now. I want to challenge each one of you. Dare to look into your future for the next five years, the next 10 years, maybe 20 years, as long as you uh, uh, can and create a big picture for your own life, for every area of life. I have a big picture for the next five decades of my life, including this decade. For each of those decades, I have put a big picture. And I've written things out that I want to see happen in different areas of my life. This is where I want to be spiritual. This is what I want to do in the ministry, professionally here. This is my big picture. For this decade, this is the big picture. For the next decade, for the next, next decade, the decade that after that, I have a big picture of it. And you can do the same thing. So where do you get it from? From God. Because he has the dream for your life. He designed you for a purpose. So you pray and say, God, you designed me for something. What's my life all about? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to become? What do you want me to accomplish? And God will inspire you. So will the angel Gabriel visit you? No. <laughs> Michael? No. <laughs> How's it going to come? It's going to come by your inspiration within you. Amen? What do you feel inspired to do? Where, where do you want to invest the rest of your life? Have a big picture. So I have a big picture. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, and verse 18, again, a very familiar verse, where there is no vision, the people, where there is no vision, and the word there literally means where there is no word from God, where there is no directive from God, the people perish. The people become lawless. The people have no restraint. Uh, they just wander around aimlessly without accomplishing anything. They keep going around in circles. They are unproductive. Where there is no vision, lives become unproductive. You're living all right. You're doing things all right. But are you going somewhere? Are you moving to higher levels? Are you growing as a person? Are you growing in all areas of your life? So get a big picture. Write it down. A third reason why some of us may stagnate is because we are afraid of the immediate price that we have to pay to get there. For example, if you have a big picture of I want to be a successful businessman it's wonderful I want to have a business that makes lots and lots of money and gives lots and lots of the kingdom wonderful that's a big picture but the immediate price is study and pass your exams <laughs> get an MBA ah oh, that I can't do and then because we're afraid of the immediate price you've got to work hard 
and you're not willing to pay the price, what happens? You stay where you are. Let's say you have a big picture of, in five years, I want to be the picture of perfect health. All these muscles in my body. That's great. The immediate price, change your diet and go to hell. No, no, go to the gym, sorry. (laughs) So that I can't do. My gym is my bed. I can do anything in the bed. <laughs> I can roll anywhere. Which you want. That's it's not going to get you anywhere. There's an immediate price to pay. You have a big picture. It's great. There's an immediate price. And because many of us are not willing to pay the price, we stagnate. Just remain where you are. The Bible says in Proverbs 10 and verse 4, the hand of the diligent makes one rich. The hand of the diligent brings increase. So there is some amount of hard work, diligence, effort required to see growth, to see increase. A fourth reason, the last reason that I'll talk about now is because some of us, we stagnate because we're afraid of change, we're afraid of challenges. See, we are changed from glory to glory. If you want to move from one level of glory to the other, you've got to change. You cannot get to the next level of glory if you're unwilling to change. And we're afraid of change. We're afraid of disrupting our world. We're afraid of taking on some challenges. So we just stagnate. A long time ago when I was working in the US, working for this IT company, I had a friend, Dave, and uh, we started off together. And, uh, you know, I just kept moving up in my career, but he was just keeping doing the same thing. He was working for the same client, doing the same kind of job after two years. Many years passed, I came back to India, I said, hi Dave, how are you doing? Still doing the same job, same client, after maybe like six, seven years. Like, Dave, things around you changing. <laughs> Technology is changing, new stuff's coming on. Don't you want to learn? Afraid of change. So what happened? Doing the same thing. So if you want to move to levels, new levels of glory, you've got to be willing to change. Maybe if you want to see ministry come forth, be willing to take on responsibility at all people's church. Or anywhere. <laughs> so how, how in five years, I want to be serving God. Wonderful. Come, uh, you know, head up our greeters or head up our ushers or whatever. Oh, that uh, leave for somebody else. Listen, if you're not willing to take up challenges, how are you going to get there? <laughs> Amen. Take on responsibility, be willing to change. Then we will see our moving from glory to glory. So let me, um, so in 2012, let us not leave any room for excuses for not moving up new levels in all areas of life. Look at yourself, where are you spiritually? Where are you professionally? Where are you in the ministry? Where are you financially? Where are you uh, relationally? Whatever. Look at all areas of your life and say, you know, in all these areas, I want to see increase. It is God's desire for me to go from strength to strength, to move up to new levels. I must see increase in 2012. So here are a few things here. Steps to step up. Just three simple things. Number one, prayerfully write down your big picture for each area of your life. Now that big picture thing is so important. You have an idea where you're going to go. So have a big picture for each area of your life and prayerfully do it. Now don't go and copy somebody else's. Bill Gates, let me get it. (laughs) That looks nice, you know. Let me get his big picture. No. You pray. God designed you unique. He gave you certain talents, interests, abilities. And you should say, God, what do you want me to become? What do you want me to achieve? What do you want me to pursue? And listen, he'll inspire you. 
So create a big picture. Write it down. Write a big picture for each area of your life. Secondly, for 2012, prayerfully write down one or two goals for each area of life that will help you step up. So this year you're going to step up towards that big picture. In order to do that, write down one or two goals. Simple. Just one or two. Of how you're going to get there. So, spiritually. Maybe this year, I'll work on spending 30 minutes a day with the Lord. Maybe an hour. Whatever is, is good for you. Step it up a bit. Maybe this year, I will, I will try to read, you know, I will try to study the book of Romans. Through the course of the year. And so, you do that. Or pick any book that you like in the Bible. Something. Set some one, one or two goals for your spiritual life. One or two goals for your ministry. You know, this year, maybe I'll go and help so-and-so brother in the ministry. Or work in this area of ministry. Serve in this area. Just one or two simple goals that you can do through the course of this year. That will help you move towards that big picture for your life. Write it down. Success psychologists say that 95 to 97 percent of people in the world do not have written goals and so they fail. Whereas only 3 to 5 percent of people write their goals and they succeed. So writing goals can make such a huge difference. So write it down. And lastly, review your big picture and goals regularly, often, frequently. Review it. This is my big picture. These are my goals. Repeat it, if possible, every day. Because repetition plants that idea in your mind. And what you repeat over and again, over and again, over again becomes programmed in you and becomes a part of you. So here's some things I do. Every time I start up my laptop, I have two things that pop up on the screen. One is called the chapters of my life. It has all the decades of my life, the next five decades, and, and like what I've told you. These are the big picture goals for the next five decades. These are the little specifics that I'm going to reach. Always pops every time I start my laptop, so I get to see it at least once or twice a day. And there's another thing that pops up that gives me my daily schedule. I'm going to spend so much time in prayer, so much time in the Word, so much time in the gym. This is when I leave for work, my daily schedule. And it tells me what I'm supposed to eat. My diet. Fruits. Lean meat. Nuts. Good stuff. <laughs> Why? Because... I need to see it every day. I need to see it every day. Keep repeating it to myself so that I know this is where I'm going and these are things I've got to do. Right? So for example, if you have a big picture of your life that even at 70 or 80 or 90 you're going to keep serving God, you also need some other things like good health. Amen? So I have a big picture. When I'm 80... I actually have it till 90, so I'll just, you know, but you won't believe me, so I'll just stick it to 80. But I have a big picture to be around till 90, right? Don't get angry with me. <laughs> so what if you don't make it? It's okay. It'll be better up in heaven anyway, so. But my big picture is that. But in order to get there, to be strong and healthy at 80 and 90 and keep serving God, Two very important things. I got to watch what I eat. And second, I got to exercise. Yeah? So, Pastor, this is church. We talk about spiritual things. <laughs> Listen, the Bible says that your body is the temple of God. Amen? The Bible says, glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are God's. So glorify God in your spirit and your body. It's there in your Bible, 1 Corinthians 6.20. You have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It's there. So glorify God in your body. 
So, I have to remind myself, look, I got to be around. I want to be around when I'm 80, 90, and I want to be strong, healthy. But to get there, I've got to have these things in order. Then when I go to the gym, oh, man, muscles ache, this ache, all that. Oh, what's the point of all this? Then I just remind myself of where I want to be when I'm 70. I have a picture. Where do I want to be when I'm 80? What kind of body do I want to have when I'm 80? Then, okay, I'm willing to work now. See? You've got to have a big picture. Where, where do you want to be? What kind of body do you want to have when you are 70, 80, 90? So, Pastor, I don't want to be around that long. Okay. But if you want to, and you want to make a difference for God in our city, in our nation, the nations of this world, then you've got to have a strong and healthy body to be able to do that. And there's a price to pay. Right? So remind yourself often, I've got to do this. I've got to take care uh, uh, of my body. Zig Ziglar is a Christian motivational speaker. He says this, A goal casually set and lightly taken will be freely abandoned at the first obstacle. A goal lightly, casually set and lightly taken will be freely abandoned at the first obstacle. The alarm didn't ring. <laughs> so blame the alarm clock, you know. I was supposed to get up and pray and then go to the gym. But the alarm didn't ring. A goal casually set and lightly taken will be freely abandoned at the first obstacle. So take these things seriously. In 2012, let us, all of us, make a desire, I have a desire, to step up in all areas of our lives. And let God be glorified. So if we're not doing this just because we want to please ourselves or, or about how much we want to achieve or whatever. We're not doing it for that. We're doing it because we want to glorify God. We want God to be honored in every area of our lives. That's our motivation. Amen? And so, with that intent, with that as your intent, you say, God, I want to step up. In 2012, uh, spiritually, financially, professionally, relationally, I mean, just look at all the areas of your life and say, God, I want to step up. Here are some little things that I can do. One or two goals, simple. Write it down for every area of your life. Amen? Increase from strength to strength, faith to faith, glory to glory. Let's turn to friends. Let's call the worship team out. We'll take a few minutes, please, just to just pray. Just wait upon the Lord. As we stand before the, the Lord, I want you to just talk to the Lord. Say, God, I know you made me for a purpose. You are not an accident. You are actually God's masterpiece. The Bible says you are his handiwork. You are his poetry that he's writing. God has a purpose, a grand design for your life. But then he wants us to be co-workers with him. To get there, to become that. So would you this morning, as we just have a few moments in the God's presence, just pray and say, God, I believe. And you made me for a reason. 
for a purpose. I am your masterpiece. So others don't think like that. That's okay. It's between you and the Lord. You are God's masterpiece. Say, God, you designed me for something. You had a dream for me when you made me. Can you please inspire that inside me so that your dream becomes my dream? So that I can see the picture that you are painting. I can understand the poem that you are writing. Help me, God. And give me the strength to pursue that. The Bible says, It is God who works in us, both to make us willing and able to do His will. It is God who works in us, both to make us willing and able to do His will. So say, God, work in me. Help me to be willing. Help me to be able to do your will. Could we just take some time, please, now? Just to wait upon the Lord. It's between you and God. You talk to the Lord. God made me for a purpose. Lord, I want to become everything you dreamed for my life. I've closed the door I will walk the path I'll run the race And I will never be the same again I will never be the same again I can never return the door I will walk the path I'll run the race and I will never be the same again fall like fire so like rain flow like mighty waters again and again Burn away the chaff And let the flame burn And glorify your name There are higher heights There are deeper seas Whatever you need to do, Lord Do in me The glory of God Fills my life and I will never be the same again And I will never be the same again I will never be the same again I can never return I've closed the door I will walk the path I run the race and I will never be the same again. Even as a, t even as a team place, I just want to, I want you to just talk to the Lord, just commune with God. between you and the Lord and say God here I am I want to do your will for my life I want to serve you
Father, we just pray, God, for each one of us here this morning. That by your Holy Spirit, you'll enable each one of us to move to new levels in 2012. In every area of our life, may each one of us ascend, oh God. May we go from strength to strength, from faith to higher levels of faith, from glory to glory. Give us the grace to do it. That will be enabled by you to move up, oh God. And may we glorify your name in the process. May we exalt your name. May we so forth your praises in the process of moving up to new levels. Before we close this morning, I just want to give an opportunity for anyone who's not right with God. Maybe this was a morning where you felt the tug of God in your heart saying, you know, there is a God and I must surrender my life to Him. and I must live a meaningful life. But that meaning comes from God as you get to know Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. And and regardless of where you are today, what your situations and circumstances may be, Jesus Christ died for your sins 2,000 years ago on the cross. He was buried, He rose up again, and He's alive today. And He will wash away your sins. And He has the power to make you a brand new person. Help you make a new start, a new beginning, so that you can have meaning and purpose in your life. Because God designed you and made you for a purpose. But it all begins as you open up your life to Jesus Christ. Is anyone here this morning you happen to come to church, or you've been coming to church, but you never opened your heart to Jesus, Jesus and said, Lord, forgive my sin. And, Become my savior and and give me meaning and purpose. If you never prayed like that before, you never give, give you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. Then I want you to pray with me this morning. So this morning can be a new beginning for you. It can be a new start for you. If there's anyone like that, just join me in this prayer. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I give my life to you. Come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. Give me meaning and purpose for my life. And I will follow you. And you alone for the rest of my life. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Anyone who prayed that prayer with me. Could you just slip up your hand. Anybody? You pray that prayer with me this morning. I see one hand here, another hand here. Anybody else? Another hand, another hand. God bless you. Could you keep your hand up? Our ushers will come. There are some up in the balcony. Just keep your hand up. Our ushers will just come right away to you quickly. If you can have more ushers going on, just give them a New Testament. There's a card that's called First Steps that gives you a little instruction on what you need to do. As, as, you made this, uh, as you prayed this prayer, made this decision this morning, this card will give you instruction on what to do to continue in this decision and take this further. So just keep your hand up. Our ushers will come and give you New Testaments and this card that's called First Steps. If you don't get it right now, on your way, I just make your way back there uh, towards the end of the hall near the doorway and, uh, and pick that up from the ushers. Um, uh, bit side. All right, so just, just make your way to the hall, uh, doorway to, uh, at the back. Talk to the ushers there. They'll give you a New Testament and this card that says First Steps. Make sure you take it with you on your way out. Let's close in prayer to, uh, this, uh, this morning. Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though darkness cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Yet the Lord shall arise upon you. And His glory will be seen upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. See you again. God bless.